Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah and in today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of GraphQL and how to attack it. I also want to tell you that there's a giveaway in this video for three Pentester Lab subscriptions and the giveaway is sponsored by Bug Crowd. All you have to do for the giveaway is comment down below and let me know your favorite bug bounty tip and your Twitter handle so I can contact you in case you win. And if you're interested, then please continue. So coming to the video, there are a lot of big companies that are using GraphQL for their APIs and that makes GraphQL hacking a very valuable skill for a bug bounty hunter. I have also used labs in these videos to demonstrate the attacks. So I'm going to be leaving links to the lab or from GitHub so you can clone it yourself. And any other resource that helped me out, I've also linked below so you can check it out. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language used by APIs to access data from the database through a single endpoint. And it makes this possible by using a defined schema which specifies exactly what data we want to access. And this is different from REST APIs where there are separate requests for each of those resources. There are two most common types of operations in GraphQL. The first is a query which is used only for reading data. And the second one is a mutation which is used to modify data. So let's look at the syntax for a query. First we have query which is the operation type. Then we have users, which is the name given by us to the operation and everything enclosed within the operation are fields and fields specify exactly what data we want to receive. So before we dive into the attacks, we need to look at something known as the introspection query. Now whenever we want to ask information about what kind of queries GraphQL supports, we will use the introspection system to do that. And the introspection system gives us details about what kind of queries, types and fields are supported by GraphQL. And by default, we can use the introspection system on every API that uses GraphQL. So let's look at some introspective queries now. Note that two underscores are prefixed exclusively on introspective queries. So first we have underscore underscore schema, which is the primary source and enables us to fetch the whole schema. Then we have types, which tells us what types the schema has. Then there's underscore underscore type, where we specifically examine a particular type using an argument. And then we have query type, which tells us what are the available query operations in the schema. So let's perform introspection on the lab now. As you can see, I have my lab right here and I'm going to refresh the page so I can show you what a GraphQL request looks like. You have the GraphQL endpoint and I'm going to send this to repeater and as you can see that we have in the query title, body and author and the author's username. So we, once we send it, we can see the corresponding data in the response. Another good thing about GraphQL is when you go on the browser and navigate to the GraphQL endpoint, sometimes you might get a browser UI for it. And you can also run queries over here. So I'm going to run a basic introspection query and I'm going to do underscore schema, fetching the whole schema. I want the types in the schema and the names of those types. So when I run it, you will see that I have the types of the schema. I have ID, Boolean string, and I have a couple of other ones, post object. And another great extension for GraphQL is InQL scanner. I put the URL and it generates the queries for me. So you can see that I have all posts, all users, node. When I go to all users, uh, I think I'm going to send this to repeat. I find it interesting. And uh, I'm going to use the InQL tab because it is much more readable right here. I'm going to remove these arguments and I'll remove page info. And when I see edges, I'm going to add a node here. And I'm going to explain to you why and what are edges and nodes. So let's pause for a minute. So let's talk about edges and nodes for a minute. What are edges and what are nodes? So node is nothing but an object containing data and an edge is something that connects two nodes. So for example, if I have one node which has student John and I have another node that has teacher Zach, then the edge will be sixth grade which connects them. Okay, so let's continue this. I saw edges and I added a node. Now when I send it, I can see that I have a user object and I need sub-selections from that object. So I'm going to go to the earlier introspection query and I, can see that there's a and I can see that there's a user object right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to query user object type to see what fields it has. 
so I need type and in the argument I'm going to add user object and then I'm going to query the fields and of course the name of the fields so when I run it oops I forgot to enclose it correctly yeah so once I run it I can see the fields uh, and which would be the sub selection so I'm going to add them here now so I'm going to add ID username and is admin to see which user is the admin and once I send it I have the data I can see the users and the usernames and I can see that Jim Carrey is the admin so this is how introspection works now keep in mind that introspection is not a one size fits all kind of a thing you have to frame and reframe the query to get exactly what you want so when we talk about vulnerabilities GraphQL also has those bugs that are found in REST API or in normal web applications and we're going to look at two of them today the first one is IDOL so let's go to our lab now so as you can see I have my lab right here and you can see that I'm logged in as a user John Doe I am also going to intercept the request to show you that I have been assigned an API key uh, now I'm going to navigate to the settings endpoint for my user so let's go to settings and when I intercept the request I can see the request which retrieves the settings for my user I'm going to send it to repeater and view it in inql uh, and you can see that there's a user argument right there which could be vulnerable to IDOR so let's try it first we're going to request our settings and we'll see that we got our data John Doe and let's try to change the ID from 1 to 2 and when we send it we get the data of another user so let's try a couple of other users you can see that this endpoint is vulnerable to IDOR the second kind of vulnerability that can be found in GraphQL is injection. So let's directly jump into our lab. So as you can see, I have my lab right here. We're going to navigate directly to the GraphQL endpoint and I'm going to run a query to find out what are the available query operations from the schema. So if you remember from the beginning of the video, we're going to use query type to do that. So schema, then query type and I need the fields from query type and now I'm gonna run it and I have a few queries that are supported so let's use the get user one so I'm gonna query only get user now and once I do that I can see that it needs an argument of username it's required but not provided so let's add that argument in our query so we add username and we don't know the username so I'm just gonna add Farah right now and when I run it I don't see any data because there is no username like that so um, let's try to trigger a SQL injection by adding a single quote and here you see the SQL injection error and now we exploit it like how we do in a normal web application so as you've seen a lot of web vulnerabilities are also present in GraphQL and the way of exploitation might be a little different from the traditional way but they definitely exist and that's it I hope you found this helpful if you did then like this video and subscribe to my channel don't forget to enter the giveaway and thank you for watching bye